Hey, Creative Weirdos. So today we're going to talk about post-production of the film, the short film Velo that I did. And in previous videos, you can check out the concept to script, the pre-production, the production, and this is the actual post-production. So what you're looking at top left is just a reference of the film itself, the full film. And right in front of you is Premiere Pro and Premiere Pro along with DaVinci Resolve or newer ones like CapCut which is easier and smaller to use but not as not that much functionality and how to tweak certain things like each program is good for something so let's dive into the post-production how in a rough sense what I did so every day out of the four days that I shot Let's go to that. So there was four days in total production. So in those four days, each day, I would basically download into my hard drive, or in this case, an SSD, a solid state drive. And nowadays, that is a must because back in the days, you just used, you know, small or full size HDs, hard drives. And the problem with the old hard drives is the constant use of a moving disc on the, you know, on the inside is just moving, 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 moving is over time it, it, it'll break down. Whereas this is just a giant flash drive. If you really look at it, it's a giant, just USB flash drive or USB C it's a must. Uh, I got a couple of these. They're cheaper. Now the SSDs are a lot cheaper now. And on Amazon, in terms of Amazon Canada, because I'm, I'm Canadian, in Amazon Canada, you can get a 500 gigabyte for like 49 like Canadian dollars at the time when I was doing this back in April, in this April of 2024. So I had two of them and each day, the funny thing is the whole film pretty much occupied 400 gigabytes because I was shooting 4K, uh, I think it was 21 something by three something to be exact. And that was because it was the A7, the Sony A7 III that I was shooting on. And I was shooting at 100 megabits per second uh, bit rate. And those are pretty large files. Even though the final film was exported to uh, 1080, 1080p, or in this case, 1080 by 1920. So obviously this is the height, this is the width, either way if you know, it's in pixels. But yeah, just a little background information. And so, having all that data every day what i would do is i would take the camera dump it into the hard drive or the ssd and then from there i would as i'm cooking and because it would be nighttime i would come and i would use a program an adobe program called adobe uh, media encoder and that would format it into a smaller file i would still have the original large files but this process would make them smaller and make them into smaller um aspect not aspect ratios but resolution so from 4k down to something like 720 and these with the same aspect ratio of 16 by nine would make what you would call if you have a slower computer because i was using a laptop i i did not since i traveled a lot i i got rid of my old desktop computer which is a lot more powerful which was a hackintosh at the time very powerful computer but like i had 16 gigs etc cetera, etc cetera. so this laptop can only do so much even though it was a pretty good laptop for what it was um so those small files from 4k went down to seven, uh, 720 and they're called proxy files. So when you're editing, as you'll see in a minute, when you're editing, if you're editing 4K and your computer does not have enough RAM 
it, or a good graphics, you know, depending on you know what program or whatever you're using, a GPU. You'll most likely use your CPU and RAM to get this to work, start editing. So the smarter way is to make what they call proxy files. They are the same file that you just shot, the same video that you shot, but they're smaller. And it allows the program and the computer to work with them. But when you're exporting to your final product, it's gonna be the 4K or, in my case, the 1080, which I exported it to 1080, um, P, it would be that. So you would retain all the quality of the original 4K, and obviously if you downsample, as they call it, to 1080. So it's the best way to do that. And the good thing about um, Adobe, as you'll see in a minute, Adobe Premiere Pro, is it allows you to do that. But also, if your computer is also slow, in terms of, because at the time I had uh, 12 GB of RAM, um, and a good amount, honestly, would be 16 plus, and a good uh, CPU, and a decent GPU. In this case, it's integrated. It's, I can go on for hours talking about this, because I'm also tech, I'm creative, and also into gear and all those other aspects. So, um, so in this case, um, using those smaller files, rather than doing or exporting as an MP4, as typical, you know, web safe format. Uh, I used what they call um, ProRes. Go back to that. ProRes. So ProRes is less compressed and it's larger. And YouTube does allow you to use ProRes. And once I found that out, I was like, oh my God, that's amazing because ProRes is not as compressed and also renders a lot faster. So the same file for an MP4 would take, I think it was for my computer, it was, it's a long time, it's a long wait time. Whereas the ProRes for a 20 minute, in this case the film ended up being 19 minutes and I think it's 57 seconds. And that is huge for to export something at a high quality that was originally 4k and also downsampling as well because it's a lot quicker to export as the same resolution as 4k but in this case if you compress it as a mp4 at a 4k good luck you're just going to destroy your laptop it's going to overheat depending on what's going on how old it is etc cetera, etc cetera. my case it wasn't that old it was a 2017 laptop but still it i can see the slow aspect of it so once i realized prores was the way to go i did prores to youtube and that took roughly uh 45 minutes long but not long for me honestly for this amount of time at 1080. All right, now let's dive into the actual timeline of Premiere Pro if you guys want to check it out because you got to organize as you got to organize that as well just like you organized your shooting script and that's where the shooting script comes in handy. So hopefully if we can look at the shooting script as well you will see that it all came in handy because once I got home and I compressed those files into proxy files I can start rearranging the night of or the next couple of days till the next week because i had the actor isaac once a week for four weeks straight so i had a lot of time to edit but i still knew i was the only one doing this i had to do the edits all these other aspects that it's it's a it's a crazy process uh so that shooting script comes in handy because once i organized it by what I was shooting, where it had to be, what days I was shooting what, grouping them in the timeline, placing them in the actual script, I mean the actual timeline from Premiere Pro, helped greatly. And when you're looking at the timeline, you can see I also color coded it at the top. You can see, since this film is English and French, because um, Isaac's um, second language is French, um, 
You can see that in this case, if you know Premiere Pro, you can have subtitles. And the beautiful thing is you can tweak how long or when. So before I show you the video and how it actually looks, I'll show you the timeline because it's a giant vertical timeline. That's how, you know, look at this 11 audio tracks. But all the blue, obviously the video's up here. Green is main dialogue or main audio. The there's Foley sound and Foley sound is secondary sound that is either recorded or you download that is pre-made. And there's a lot of bike sounds that you couldn't get based upon the production and everything like that because the mic wasn't good enough to pick that up. It was too windy and the wind was too strong at times because obviously you're a moving object. So it affects the audio. So I had to get Foley sound from different websites and things like that. So I, you got to color code it because the audio levels, if you can see on the um, right side, you'll see the audio levels jump as if I, once I press play, depending on which part of the film you'll see. See, dialogue is supposed to be the highest audio um, levels. And the beautiful thing is working with the, working with Foley sound, background, ambient noise, they're all color coded. So um, yellow, I, if I remember, is Foley sound. Um, specific full sound, sorry, that's ambient sound. Blue at the bottom was music. Um, this was Foley. This was Foley. They're all, all of this is Foley. This is music, main audio. So as you can see, inserts were color coded as well compared to the main scenes, which was like a pink, main audio is green. Secondary audio was green, but depending on where you're putting them, this was ambient noise. And if I zoom out a bit, you can see color coded and everything like that. And the levels that the, the volume levels for each were different because music is supposed to be at a certain decibel. And if I play it, see that? So the beauty of this whole aspect is the script guided this, but as you're editing, you see the big difference in this whole film because some things fit here, other things fit there. You rearrange things, you crop them, as well as getting different formats because the bike shots were shot on a cell phone and the cell phone is obviously gonna be a different format altogether. So mixing this with a 4K video uh, into the same timeline, you gotta make sure that there's, there's a compatibility aspect, aspect to this whole thing. But either way, also choosing black and white for the film was a budgetary thing as well because I'm already dealing with giant files on both sides, whether it was from the cell phone, um, or the camera, being being a black and white film helped because color takes its own toll on the editing process because to render color, sync two types of footage that for, are from different cameras, it's a whole process. Even the lenses and the depth of field and everything's not gonna be the same when you're looking at, you know, a cell phone compared to a full camera, you know? It's not gonna be the same depth of field. So all these things come into play, but when you have the money, you would get the right cameras that all sync up together. But even still, films, even big giant production films have to match colors and color science and lenses to their, you know, um, very small action camera style shots. They always have to match it to the larger full body cameras. Granted, a lot of these cameras are getting better. Even the smaller ones are getting like cinema, like quality wise, but you have to match them as best as you can. And when you look at the timeline, a lot of the footage is a mix of mainly um, the Sony camera and the cell phone footage. So as you can see, it's a giant timeline with the up here is subtitles, video, up here is color coded is inserts that you'd put in and then you would have ambient in the yellow you would have the foley sound bike sounds sound effects and things like that on the red and you'd have music in the blue at the bottom and it's good to organize them in that way and 
this roughly took the editing roughly took i started fully editing the first night which is the beginning of april after the first night i've just started piecing things together and doing that whole process and coming back to the whole thing is make sure you make proxy files if you most people don't have a crazy computer but also that's also the budget i didn't have anybody to send this to i did but it would have added more to the budget i would have to pay more time you're reliant on other people and in this case i didn't feel like i wanted to do that i knew the skills i had the skills i've done this before but at the scale and everything like that so the film's quality the film's everything is dependent upon all these factors and that's what, you know it affects the finished product and honestly the way it turned out for literally the budget uh and everything it can be obviously a million times better if it had a crazier budget but at the end of the day it comes back to story it comes back to creativity it comes back to many other aspects that I'll talk in future videos but if you have any other questions or anything else you want to know about this process i will do a live a video in the coming weeks and if you guys really want if you guys want me to do that just you know let me know i'll put out um a date for that live and depending on where you guys are coming from thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification also check out our website for free educational downloads if you're looking for more story tools check out our new story planner notebook a guided story structure composite notebook that gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to plot your upcoming story now available on our website as an ebook and soon a physical book on amazon and other platforms and if you're interested we offer creative consulting and more information check out the website in the description below till next time weirdos peace out